Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Five Actions to Stay Ahead in Digital Marketing. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few points so you know how to participate in today's event. Throughout the presentation, there are a number of polls including, included to enable us to find out more about you. You also have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the question pane of the control panel. You may also send your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address as many as we can during the Q&A session at the end. Today's presenter is Imran Farouk, Digital Marketer and CEO of MMC Learning. Imran is a digital entrepreneur with over 20 years experience in educating thousands of marketers across the world. He is a specialist in digital marketing automation for small businesses and spends time with subject experts to develop learning content that can generate revenue online. His purpose is to help marketers and educators succeed so they don't get left behind, avoid frustrations involved with technology implementation and help create a pathway to earn more for a better future lifestyle. Without further ado, I'd like to now introduce you to Imran. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, let's get going. I'm excited to be presenting today uh, on a topic that I am very passionate about and which is close to my heart. Um, so thank you guys for taking the time to listen to me. And my aim is to share as much insights and information I can with you. The focus of this session is really on personal development. Uh, so a slightly different spin to some other webinars you may have uh, come across previously um, because my focus is on you as an individual rather than what's taking place in the market. I'd also like to thank the Chartered Institute of Marketing for putting this together. So some of the superstars like Megan and Sophie and uh, Sarah behind these webinars um, initiatives, uh, which is a good thing. It's good to connect and uh, share insights uh, using the technology especially since the weather is uh, completely crazy in the UK at the moment, so it's snowing up and down the country. So this is a perfect way to uh, connect with you guys. Um, throughout the presentation, there's a couple of actions I'm going to give you to do, uh, as the title says. So if you've got a pen and a piece of paper handy, um, you know, grab a pen and an A4 piece of paper, uh, that, that'd be good. Um, and um, also, there's going to be a lot in this presentation. So what I want you to do is look for the one thing uh, or one or two things in this presentation that you think will make a difference. Uh, so try and take away any um, light bulb moments that you can make, take and uh, implement. Um, obviously with this technology, we have a challenge. You've probably got emails coming in, text messages and, and so on. Um, if you can, uh, for the next um, 30 to 40 minutes, put them aside um, so you can really capture some of the um, things that I'm going to be sharing with you uh, today. Um, so, so where are you right now? Where do you want to be in the future? Uh, so there, there's many of you who are at the start of your journey. So you're starting off. Some of you may be a lonely journey. You might be the only marketer in your business. Um, some of you are finding it, you know, all this digital stuff is too overwhelming. Uh, some of you um, may have been working in marketing for a long time and you still feel as though you're getting left behind. Uh, so, so you may be at different stages of your learning, different stages of your career. Um, uh, and, you know, where do you want to be in the future? I'm sure all of us want to be in a position where we are masters in digital marketing. You know, you've got the freedom to um, choose whatever job you want to go into in the future. Um, you may want some certainty in this crazy world of digital. Um, some of you may be out to... Uh, build connections, new connections, build new relationships. Uh, some of you might want to be at the top of your game in the future, so it's, it's quite key that you achieve positions of influence. Uh, and some of you who, who are probably further in your career, you may want to, be, you may be looking at, you know, you may want to grow internally as an individual, um, or you may be looking at making a contribution back to um, uh, a charity or the society, or you may want to become an educator in, in this field. So what I want to talk about today is potentially to get you from where you are now to where you could be in the future is to focus on these personal development actions. I'm also going to touch on elements of the uh, brand new qualification, the CM Digital Diploma in Professional Marketing. 
throughout where I think is relevant. Um, I'm not going to go into depth on the on this uh, qualification in terms of uh, the details of it, but I'll, I will be touching on specific elements of it. And I think there was a webinar that Michael did previously, which went more into depth on the qualifications. So I'd recommend uh, possibly listen to that. Um, so, so why? Um, uh, do we want to focus on these actions? So, so there's a lot. There's a lot happening in in the marketplace right now. Um, if you look on Google Trends and type in digital marketing, this curve is only going one way. And you guys already know that when you look at statistics like um, ad spend and budget spend, quite a large percentage is going into digital right now. So, so I don't need to educate you on on the trends. Um, a fascinating exercise that I've been doing for a good number of years is looking at different job titles on LinkedIn. I'm sorry, I'm a bit geeky with this stuff. Uh, and going back the good five, six years, those, those few thousand people on LinkedIn with digital and digital marketing and a job title. And if you were to do a search now, there's over, you know, it's almost reaching 7 million people on LinkedIn have got the word digital marketing and a job title. Um, and even the word digital in a job title, that's you know gone up a little over uh, 11.7 million. Um, the subject area of digital marketing itself is getting highly fragmented, highly complex uh, as a subject area. Um, and you know these elements are going so in depth um, uh, when you become channel specific. But if you look at it from an employer perspective, um, so so the bad news for employers and companies at the moment is. Digital marketing is becoming too complex for them to figure out how to do it internally. They need the resources. Um, so this is good news for you guys, marketers. So, you know, thank you for joining this call. The good news is that you've probably got jobs for the next um, 10, 10 to 20 years. Uh, you know, the, these days, uh, you know, people uh, have open arms for a, for a marketer with uh, digital skills. Uh, so there's, there's there's a lot of challenges from a from an employer perspective. Um, the flip side of that is, you know, there are people talking about the future of the marketer. Uh, you know, the robots are coming. Uh, in fact, the reality is the, the robots are already here. You know, my my kids can walk up walk over to uh, the Amazon Alexa and place an order for products and it's delivered to the house the next day. So there's no there's no marketer or salesperson involved in that equation. There's, um, you know, you can buy automated advertising. You can, um, you know, some of these uh, chat areas that you're speaking to, you're not even speaking to a human being. Well, across the board, if you look at any job uh, with this tech and the change in digital, uh, you know, all jobs from taxi drivers to sales and marketing people are being affected with this way of technology. Um, but what I want to emphasize is um, there is, an abundance of possibilities and opportunities to have a think about. If I was to go back 10 years ago and have a look at how much it would cost to start a tech business, you're looking at the, in the region of quarter of a million to half a million pounds to set up a tech business. If we look at that today, it costs you a few thousand pounds up and running with the uh, servers and the processing power around uh, the tools for you to get up and get started uh, straight away. If you look at many other things like the e-commerce industry, which has got billions of pounds worth of transactions, um, you know, we're, you know, that only represents a small percentage of all transactions right now. So across the years to come, um, there are, you know, this, this market is going its billions. Um, and it's amazing to see that there are, um, you know, a handful of companies in the world that have generated a billion dollar turnover in the space of two years. Now, what I'm not saying is, you know, everyone out there can go and do that. But what I'm saying here is a possibility. These things are becoming possible. And, you know, there's another billion people that aren't even on the internet right now that will be joining the internet. So it's, it's quite fascinating to understand the um, global uh, abundance of opportunities that are out there. So a question for you is, you know, where is your thinking in this mix of activity? And you've heard this quote over and over again. You know, if you keep thinking the way you're thinking, you'll keep getting the results that you're getting. And if I was to go back, um, so I'm going to use this as an example. Um, if I was to go back to the times when television was invented, 
and you had radio advertisers who then um, transfer themselves to presenting on TV. So when the first few programs came out, so these radio presenters sat on TV and looked down at the script and read the script out. And they didn't take advantage of the fact that they're on camera, they didn't take advantage of the medium. Um, so, so that's carrying through the same type of thinking. If I was to give you an exercise so on the screen here, um, you've got six basketball players, three of them are wearing blue shirts, three of them are wearing black shirts. If, if your job across two minutes was to um, count the number of times the basketball is being passed around between the blue players, your job is to count the number across two minutes. If halfway through, a man with a suit and a monkey mask came right in front of you and pointed at you or did whatever you wanted and then disappeared, would, would you notice him? So this is a real exercise that was done, an experiment. Um, I think the, the real experiment was with a man in a grill, gorilla suit and nobody noticed anything. Uh, so the point here that I'm making is your eyes and ears can only see and hear what your brain is telling it. Um, sometimes we're missing the obvious opportunities around us. Um, also, what is you probably need to spend some time thinking about where your brain is occupied. So a lot of people, I think the percentage is on, on here wrong, but whatever applies to you. Uh, but the some people are you know spending too much time thinking about things that are never going to happen. There's people thinking about things in the past that can't be changed, thinking about worries uh, and so on. And then the real legitimate worries, you know, there's all your small centers of your brain that's been occupied thinking about them things. In terms of my journey, um, I've been doing what I've been doing for 20 years. Uh, my passion and purpose is to educate marketers and help marketers succeed. I've been doing that since 96. Also spent a lot of time um, um, and my background in e-learning as well, uh, so I spent a lot of time helping subject matter experts uh, build and sell content online and over the last five, six years, after educating so many marketers, I've got a lot of business to saying to me, help them do this in real life, so I've been involved in uh, creating sales and marketing automation funnels for small businesses. So as a business, one of the hats is I'm a credit, um, we run an accredited study centre called MMC Learning part of the Manchester Metropolitan University. So another hat is running the MSc in digital marketing at the university. And um, I have a passion to, uh, to um, uh, and, a, and a target to educate uh, 20, by 2025 is to educate 10,000 marketers. Um, and, and I think the opportunity for marketers is very unique. Uh, so for me across the last 20 years, you know, I've been through times where, you know, marketers were being made redundant. You know, we went through some tough times going back 15 years ago. And we've battled through it. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, the timing is now different for marketers. You know, marketers are, are being welcomed with open arms in businesses. Um, so we we have a focus to to help marketers. The the reason I've, I've put these uh, five actions together can, is quite complicated in the world out there in many ways. So this is what we want to avoid happening to you. Um, so, which is why I've created these um, five actions. Um, so if you have got a pen and a piece of paper, um, spread this out, write down five P's going down one side of the page so you can capture some of the actions I'm going to go through uh, in this presentation. So the first point I want to make is pathway um, and to know the direction and the destination that you're going in. Without this, you if you don't have this, you're not going to get anywhere. And if you don't know where you're going to, you'll never reach, obviously never reach your destination. In this presentation, I've got lots of mind maps in this presentation. Um, because of time, I'm only covering certain elements of these mind maps. So you, at the end, you'll see my LinkedIn details. You can connect with me and I'll, I'll share these mind maps so you can look at, look at them in more detail. But the first, for the sake of this presentation, I'm only going through certain elements of these mind maps. Um, so the things I want to choose off this mind map is uh, is, is the element around success. Um, if uh, if your ambition is to become a chief marketing officer, um, there are other chief marketing officers in the market who have achieved that position and success. 
So there is somebody out there who's achieved whatever you're aiming for. Um, so it's important to connect with them individuals, study their tactics, figure out how they got there, and, and so on. It's important to define um, the end result. So I've trained a lot of marketers. Um, so over the 20 years, we've trained thousands of marketers. And, and I get a lot of people coming to them and saying the goal is to earn more money and a bigger salary. Um, so if I turn around and said to you, okay, here's £10 per, per month more on top of what you're earning right now, that's probably not what you're thinking of, but in fact, vaguely, you've hit that goal. So that's, there's an importance to actually defining the goal. And speaking about goals, um, uh, you may have come across the term BHAG, which stands for Big, Hairy, Audacious Goal. Um, so this is something created by an author called uh, Jim Collins. Um, who has done research on the habits of successful visionary companies. Um, and a BHAG is, is since a goal which is so big that it scares you a little bit. And I certainly set BHAGs for myself and for the business I run. Um, and what I found is in, in creating these BHAGs, you change as an individual. You may not hit the goal, uh, but you're changing as an in, individual and you reaching much further, um, which is pushing you to perform uh, at a uh, high, higher pace. Um, there, there are other terms for this. Um, so Google have something called moonshots. Uh, so you know Google's moonshot is to categorise every single piece of information in the world. And that is a moonshot goal, and there's there's many uh, different ways of of looking at this. If I was to look at the standard marketing career ladder going back um, a number of years, so th this was typically the way you would wake up uh, in, in a marketing role. So that's changed considerably. Um, so it's changed at all three different levels. So at the top level, senior management and director level, there's lots of brand new job titles. And in fact, this diagram here is limited because I'm coming across other job titles like chief digital officer and, and, and all, all kinds of weird and wonderful titles which never existed a year ago. Uh, so, the, so this is changing quite rapidly. And um, also at the entry level, there's so many different types of entry level positions coming up uh, in, in the marketplace. But the biggest change is taking place right here in the middle the, uh, where you're heading towards management level, and there's so many specialist marketing stock digital positions, which is just you know, expanding at a, at a substantial pace. Um, for those of you who are working your way up from, uh, who, who have, have some entrepreneurial blood inside you and you want to break out of your marketing role and become a freelancer and a consultant and so on, there's a big, big market. Um, I recently saw a study uh, which is saying, you know, marketing is becoming one of the top 10 career lifestyle choices. So if you're somebody who wants the freedom of not working for a boss, working for yourself, um, freedom from time, uh, you know, not having a nine to five job and so on. So, so there's big opportunities for freelancers, which I'll t touch on later in uh, my presentation. Um, so, so I'm coming up to a, a poll here. Uh, so I've got a question. I'm, I'm keen before, before I recommend uh, what actions you should take for this first section. I'm keen to know a bit more about uh, you guys who are on, on this webinar. Uh, so where you are on this uh, equation of planning your future. We'll give you about uh, 20 seconds to uh, just vote in this poll. Okay, good. We've got a few um, bots coming in. Brilliant. Okay, thank you. I know some of this might even be personal to you, but thank you for uh, sharing uh, your results. So quite an even split um, across there. Um, so, so quite quite evenly split. Um, I'm glad a few of you. Um, so, about ten percent of you that have said that you know exactly where you're going. So, so congratulations for planning to that level. Um, 
uh, quite a few of you at the start of your journey and direction, uh, which is good. I'm going to recommend an action for you, uh, for you guys. Uh, and some of you got a rough idea. So great. And um, so, so let's go on to the next slide. So this is the action that I want you to have a think about. Um, so, so I want you um, to um, think about um, mapping your pathway and defining the destination uh, that you're uh, going on. So this is the action. For those of you who who, who mark that you you haven't got a clue what um, in in the nicest sense that you you're still trying to figure this out, there's quite a lot of actions that you can do to try and figure it out a bit more. And this is one I like I like doing. I'm going to take it from Jeff Bezos. So I know I know some of you probably think Amazon is evil, and they're out to destroy the world and destroy retailers and so on. But will and and Jeff Bezos is is a is like a Bond villain, but will take the best of him for now and uh, recommend an exercise that he did uh, when he's planning his own uh, development. So so he, he did an exercise where he um, imagines he is 85 years old or um, he'll imagine himself 10 years in the future. And he'll, have, he'll put himself in that position and visually imagine him actually being there. So you want to visually put yourself there and then wake up from that state and then write down all the regrets that you wish you had done across the 10 years. So quite a powerful exercise and it will bring, a, bring out a lot of information that will help you decide on the direction. And in fact, he did this exercise before he set up Amazon and obviously set up Amazon, uh, which worked extremely well. <clears throat> okay, good. So we're going to move on to the uh, next action. So the next action is about positioning. And I'll just give you some time to absorb this next mind map that I've got here. So, so, so the key point I want to make um, about positioning yourself as a marketer is if there are opportunities out there and the question is, are, are you the person that people think of when there's an opportunity? Um, and if the answer to that is no, you've got quite a lot of work to do uh, to to really work towards grabbing them opportunities. So there's a couple of things that you could take away from here. And they involve in positioning yourself, um, your LinkedIn profile, your online presence. And being involved in education. Um, networking is important. So if you're a CIM member, I would certainly recommend that you um, look at um, attending events and, and building a building a network up. In terms of looking at the CM digital qualification, the challenge in the marketplace right now is there's <coughs> there, there's a lot of people delivering qualifications right now. There's a lot of digital marketing providers. So, so it's quite confusing um, which training provider to go with. Um, so, so I wanted to reiterate some of the benefits going down the CIM route. Um, I mean, a lot of people out there offering what they're doing right now, I don't think they'll be around in a couple of years' time. Uh, so the CIM has been around for over 100 years. Um, so if you're going to spend time studying it's important that you get a qualification, which is worth is going to be worth something, worth something in a couple of years' time. And also, there's a big community of professionals. Um, again, if I did a search on LinkedIn, there's over 200,000 people connected to the Chartered Institute of Marketing, and all the qualifications are built with the employer in mind. So, so when you do a CM qualification, you've got some certainty that there's a confidence from employers in recruiting. So, so, this, so this is my uh, next action. 
um, which is to write down what your purpose is and how are you positioning yourself. So, so for this section, I probably recommend that you go and have a look at the TED video that Simon Sinek has done um, about identifying your why, and he's wrote a great book on identifying your why. Yeah, you do what you do. If you look at some of the greatest leaders in the world, like Steve Jobs, even people like Nelson Mandela and, and so on, when they communicated, they always communicated with the why, not the how and the what. Okay, good. So, so the next uh, third uh, area of action we're looking at is proficiency and um, to come into mastery. Um, so there is an overload of information in the marketplace. Um, information can be, you know, it's entertaining, some of it's useful, some of it's useless. Certainly there's a lot of entertainment out there. So those of you who have got Netflix accounts, you can spend a huge amount of number of hours just binge watching three series. Uh, so there's a real uh, overload of information. But the key point I want to make here is that the knowledge you gain is an asset. And you will get a return, a financial return. So I want you to think about changing your relationship with knowledge. So when I'm out there telling people, to, advising people to do different courses and qualifications, it's, it's not a cost to you. It's an investment that you're going to get a return in. At some point in the future, you will get a career promotion based on the qualifications, the knowledge you've gained, and so on. I mean, to give you a direct example, and this is obvious for freelancers and consultants. Um, I, in in my days, I've done a lot of Google AdWords consultancy. Um, and, you know, I've probably done a good, done a thousand or thousand pounds worth of consultancy around Google AdWords. I spent, you know, and I spent money on doing courses on Google AdWords, and that has, uh, you know, has a direct impact on. On the, on the return. So it's important to understand uh, this this relationship and knowledge. Um, there, if you look at this model, there's uh, 25 digital marketing skills that you should really benchmark yourself against, which cover these different areas from plan, reach, act, and convert, and engage. Um, so wh when you're looking at each of these skills, um, you know, let's uh, take an example in reach. So when you're looking at search marketing, uh, so you want you want to be asking yourself, do you know the best practices and the levers to gain the results? And you can also ask the question, where is where is your business? So, so, so this, this, this next slide talks about the T-shaped digital marketer. Um, this is a term that's been coined for, uh, uh, it's been a couple of years, I still, I still like the term, uh, and there's three areas to this equation, and I like the work that both wraps have done on this. So there's a base knowledge, uh, marketing foundation, and channel expertise. And there's, there's a couple of slides here that look at a T-shaped marketer. Um, and the background to this, there is um, some core discipline that you need. There's a wide, uh, it's called a T because there's the top part of the T is there's a wide range of things that you should know as a marketer or a digital marketer. And then the T bit of it, the long bit of it is there should be some deep disciplines on uh, what you should be learning. And depending on your role, your marketing role, your, in fact, this T doesn't, you know, this T-shirt doesn't look like a T, it looks like an M. Um, but it's important to create your own version of this, uh, depending on what role you do in marketing. So this is an example of a digital marketing uh, strategist. This is an example of a content person. This is an example of a PR and comms person. And so on. Um, so we've got another poll that's coming up here. Um, so I'm keen to know a little bit about you guys. Um, We'll launch this poll and give you another 30 seconds or so to answer this. Okay, good. Some votes are uh, coming in.
we've got at least one person that's coming as a digital marketing expert, which there are a few more. Yeah, that's great. So I'll, I'll give you some advice separately towards the, towards the end of this webinar. Uh, so the couple of your specialists, so the um, challenge for you guys is to look at this T-shape. Um, most of you have got some knowledge on trying to build it up. And some of you are getting left behind. So, so I've got a, a couple of bits of actions and, and advice for you guys later, later in this presentation. Uh, but thank you for taking part in that poll. So, so uh, there's a, a good mix of people. Uh, so, so, the, so action number three is to analyze your own digital marketing skills and identify the gaps inside your digital marketing skills. So uh, take my slide deck later and have a look at different areas. Um, one thing I'd highly recommend is find your natural strengths because digital marketing is so fragmented. There are things that you are naturally good at. Uh, so my advice would be really to zone in on what you're naturally good at and try to make them as your uh, as, as your T-shape. Um, I'm, I'm actually excited about the structure of the uh, new CI and digital diploma in professional marketing. Um, it's uh, taken a while to launch this qualification with all the different feedback we've had from industry and different experts. Uh, so, so what we have here is an extremely powerful qualification that will make you into this uh, T-shirt marketer because it's covering um, key elements of strategy, uh, key elements of the uh, experience, and also mastering digital channels. Uh, so um, I think uh, all the products and the qualifications in the marketplace, uh, you know, I truly think this is now one of the uh, best in terms of content and knowledge perspective and actually kitting you up for the future to have the right knowledge um, and also to have the knowledge that will benefit employers. So, so I'll, t I'll touch on some of these elements again uh, in, in a further section. Um, so, so the next point I want to make is around prosperity. Um, and the key point I want to make here is your prosperity equals your employer prosper prosperity. Uh, so if your employer is successful and um, uh, the things that you do, you, you'll become successful. The reason I say this is I work with a lot of marketers who are working inside the businesses. And you as marketers, you, you, you know more information. You know, you're ten, 10 steps ahead of your employer. So you know more than your employer. And your employer may only still be taking baby steps forward. So ideally, what you want to do is hold the employer's hand and help them take the steps one at a time uh, through, to, through the journey they're taking. It's important to understand, um, I, I think as a marketer, you have to take responsibility now to own the entire customer journey. Uh, you can't own one part of it, whether it's, um, you know, there's a lot of marketers who are concerned about acquisitions, some are concerned, concerned about retention. Well, the challenge of the, what's taking place right now and the convergence of all the different disciplines or sales, marketing, customer service, and so on. As a marketer, it's now your responsibility to understand and take control of the entire customer journey. Um, have a look at some of the research on the right-hand side of this presentation. So do, if you haven't looked at this, it's a critical piece, piece of research to understand. Uh, so this is Google's key mo uh, uh, micro moments. Uh, a very interesting study done to see what states people, uh, potential customers are in. Um, wearing my consultancy hat, I think we need to go back to the basics. Uh, I'm coming across so many businesses, whether it's a small business or a large business, the basics are missing. Uh, why are they missing? Yeah, because um, a lot of assumptions are being made. People are saying email is dead, let's move on to the next channel. Um, uh, you know, people are saying we need to do Snapchat and so on. And the re reality is, you as a marketer needs to decide by um, connecting with your customers what's dead and what's not. And some of the basics are missing, uh, like creating welcoming our onboarding journeys. If people are ready to buy, help them to buy. If people aren't ready to buy, need to look at longer term uh, sales funnels. So, so looking at the uh, CIM qualification, the power of this qualification is it's assessed by work-based assessment. 
So this allows you to take your knowledge and apply it to your workplace. So if you're doing a digital strategy module, you will be creating a digital strategy on the business you're working for. And you can see some of these elements now in a bit more detail across the three modules. So the fourth, the fourth action I've got for you is, you know, start to identify how you can help achieve prosperity for the business you're working for. Um, if you're a freelancer, I've got another couple of uh, things for you to have a think about here. Uh, so some key questions that you um, that you want to ask. So if you're a freelancer or a consultant, the challenge for you guys is there's only one of you, and you've got to figure out how to duplicate yourself. Um, if uh, there's some of you on this call who are uh, ambitious about going freelance or becoming a consultant, there's three things that I'd, I'd get you to have a think about. And there's this thing called the hedgehog concept. It's by the author Jim Collins again. And there's three questions that you need to ask. What are you deeply passionate about? What drives the economic engine? You know, what is uh, what are people asking for out there? And thirdly, what can you be the best in the world at? So it's, so it's important to um, really think through these items. Um, so, so the final point I want to make on uh, this action area, and I strongly believe that this is an important element. It could give you a lot of competitive advantage. Uh, and what we're talking about is to become productive and become in, in a flow state. Uh, and uh, I'm training so many people, so this is, uh, for some people, this is what the day looks like. Um, for some people, every day is like this. Uh, you know, we're living in a world where it's, it's quite difficult. So I'm, I'm, I am going to do another poll and a final poll in, in a second, which is to ask you how are you finding your day-to-day -day role? You know, how, how are you finding your levels of productivity in the marketing workplace? Because marketing right now can become a very crazy well, so we'll do another survey. I promise this is the last survey. <coughs> okay, good. So we've got a couple of votes coming in. And depending on where you have, I've got some actions and some advice that I'm going to give you around this. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for the feedback. Um, uh, so again, they're quite evenly spread out. For those of you who, are, who have achieved a high level of productivity, congratulations. Um, that, that, that's great. Some of you have started systems, uh, so that's good, good to see. Um, and uh, some of you are just at the beginning stages, so you have moments of productivity, some of you struggling to focus on. I'm going to give you, going to help you with that in this uh, next section of, of the presentation. Um, before I go into the into the actions, um, it's important to get into this flow state um, or a micro flow state. So, so you you probably all experience some kind of flow state. Um, so, so the word flow um, came about in the last, uh, I'd say, in the last hundred years. Well, it's commonly not known in the sporting world as um, you know athletes use it to when they say um, they're in the zone. So you've got jazz musicians that use it when they're in the pocket. So, so you probably have moments of productivity or moments of flow where you spent an hour doing something and you've got five hours work done. Uh, so these these are moments of productivity, um, and these days is. It's, it's extremely difficult. The BBC did a, a study going back 10 years and when they looked at attention spans, you know, and on average, you know, people's attention spans were about 20 minutes. I mean, the world we live in today, you know, people's attention spans are about nine seconds. So, so that pre presents a, a, a big, big challenge. Um, so, you know, some of you, are, uh, as indicated in the poll, are struggling with this. And there's, um, Things that you need to have a look at. I'm going to go through um, uh, something in a second, which uh, goes through how you map out uh, different horizons or focus. There are lots of exercises that you can do. Um, there's a big thing in the workplace about mindfulness and the power of now. 
Um, so you you know you've got so much information in your head. You you, you know there's not many many people now living in the present. Um, so if you're into meditation or if you're new to meditation, there are apps on the iPhone that you can download, and um, uh, I think there's one called Headspace, which is quite a cool app that you can download uh, and, and kind of think about. I mean, some of the marketers I speak to are just spending every single day just going in in and out of meetings and not not getting anything done. Um, so so the, the, there's a real um, challenge on stage. I've dropped another element in case you're wondering what it is on on this slide, which is to do with um, uh, kind of a bit of a health angle, not that I teach uh, teach health, um, but but I'm seeing there's a big challenge, um, especially amongst techie digital marketers who are spending a lot of time on the laptop and a lot of time indoors. Um, so so there, I mean, there is it is important to get out and look at the sky and get some fresh air. Uh, it's important to look at the food you're drinking, sleep uh, patterns. So so this is an area of study. Um, which is you know going more and more in depth about the importance of you know going to sleep at night and getting a deep sleep. I mean all of these things uh, affect productivity. I mean, right now, um, as individuals, we all live in a box. You know we jump, get into a box and go to work. You know uh, we jump in a box to um, uh, to work and so on. So we're just living in this um, strange world at the moment uh, where um, we're, we're kind of wrapped up. In, in things and, and, and life is just passing by really fast. Um, so focus uh, stands for you know follow one course until success. Uh, so it's important to focus on the one thing uh, that's going to uh, make you successful. So the final action number five that I've got here for you is to map out six horizons of focus, uh, which I'm going to show you on the next slide. Um, so there's an author called David Allen who has come up with this concept of creating this six horizon of focus and he used the analogy of an aeroplane flying at different levels. Um, so he's got a 50,000 foot level down to the runway level. Um, you can use this analogy or you could use six different different levels. Um, you know, so, so the top level is, um, you know, look at, looking at your career, your life purpose, um, uh, you know, what, what, do you, what do you want uh, from life? The next level, you're looking at a kind of a three to five year plan. Uh, which professional direction do you want to end up in? Um, what are the skills that you need to be aiming for? The next level down, the 8,000 foot level, is uh, looking at the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, then you've got areas of responsibility and focus. Um, then you've got at the 10,000 foot level, is a project that you're working on from a, the marketing projects that you're working on a day to day basis, which could be the campaigns. And then you've got a runway level. Uh, which uh, is the day-to-day -day tasks, the emails that you're answering, the calls that you're making, and so on. So it's important to map out, uh, map this out uh, for what you're doing. So you can use this in your business, on a business level, you can use this as an individual, you can even use it at home with your family. Um, so for example, if you know if your jobs change and you're having to move to a different country, you know, you're going to come home around the dinner table and have a very different conversation around the dinner table. So it's going to be a you know, kind of a 40,000 foot level conversation that you're having. You can use this model in meetings. Uh, so you probably had lots of meetings where you've got, you know, some people in the room where they're talking about the vision and the mission and they're up there and you've got some people in the, in the room uh, talking about the runway level and what needs to be done. Um, so so this this is good just to um, kind of map on. And at a personal level, I'm educating a lot of marketers who, who have just been focused on the runway level and the projects that they're working on. And then the way, you know, all of a sudden, two years later, you kind of wake up and say, actually, you know, this is not where I want to be. Um, you know, I was aiming to become this uh, a senior marketer in this kind of position in this kind of role. And in fact, I've just gone off on a different tangent. So, so this this alignment is 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 important uh, for you to uh, really use and and think about. Uh, so, so this kind of concludes the last section. I've got a couple of more slides um, that I'm going to run through just to uh, just to summarise. And uh, if you've got any questions at this moment in time, so now's the time to start thinking about your questions and, and putting them in, uh, in into the uh, box and into the presenter chat, in, in, sorry, not presenter chat, in your chat area that you've got on your right hand side, which I'll, I'll see later on. Um, so, so just to wrap up, um, interesting question: How good does your marketing have to be? Um, so this is another thing I've been looking at over the last couple of years. So the expectation uh, for you as a marketer 
is now changed. So your marketing has to be beyond good. There's now an expectation for you to be uh, uh, much better than the standards that were there uh, a couple of years back. And I like this quote from Jeb Burr, which is, make your marketing so useful, people would pay for it. Uh, so just reflect on this for a moment. You know, are you creating pieces of marketing that are highly valuable to your target audience? I would have loved to have to talk to more about uh, uh, MarTech. Uh, so as, as marketers, you become even more powerful individuals. Uh, so there's about 5,000 pieces of software out there which are automating sales and marketing. Um, so it's important to really understand uh, this mix. Um, there is some coverage of this content in, in one of the CIM modules uh, as well. Um, just for fun, I decided to um, write down all the apps I'm using. It's not fully complete yet. So me as an individual, I thought I'll do my own MarTech uh, version. So this is what I look like in, in, in all the different pieces of software, software that I'm using. And I accidentally hit the wrong button on my MindWrite software and it looked like this. Uh, which I thought, okay, that's interesting because it's like I've got a team of people working for me. Um, so it's, understand, it's really important to understand going forward as a marketer, the power you've got in your hands uh, with, with these strong pieces of software and, and technology. Um, so, so when I started off, I, I probably took it through a bit of a roller coaster riding ride in terms of looking at the opportunities for a marketer and also the challenges of the marketing world in the next 10 years. It doesn't matter what's taking place around you, there is one constant in this equation. That constant is you. Uh, you know, what are you doing to um, develop yourself as, as an individual? If you as an individual, you're not learning, or you're not educating yourself, and you, you automatically you're going to become static, and that's going to present uh, quite a challenge for you. I've got a little reminder here of um, the thought of Picasso there, so I'm just going to share a story with you. Um, so Picasso, the famous painter, uh, was out on the street painting, and a, and, and a woman approached Picasso um, and asked Picasso to draw a sketch of her, draw, uh, draw uh, a sketch of her. Um, and it took Picasso 30 seconds to draw this sketch of this woman, and he handed it back to her. And the woman turned around and said, uh, well, Picasso said to her, um, this sketch is going to be worth a lot of money in the future. And, and the woman turned around and said, you know, it's only taking me 30 seconds to sketch this. And his response was, it's taken me 30 years to produce this 30 seconds. So it's important to understand that. For those of you who did indicate that you just want to start the journey and you're struggling on focus and, and so on. And, and again, I'm, I'm educating a lot of marketers who are learning PPC for the first time, learning SEO for the first time. Just remember that it looks quite daunting to start off with, but you have to start the journey and you have to discipline yourself to do bits every day. And there will be across a period of time, there'll be a moment in the future where you will become masters in these digital channels. So it's the discipline and the focus of continuous learning, um, which is important. Uh, and, and a lot of you who are more experienced, you, you, you probably, um, uh, you know, experience these days where you, you know your career may have gone static for a number of years and you've got stuck in a certain position that's been difficult uh, to to get out. Um, and you know you don't you don't want to become one of these people 20 years down the line um, you know, where uh, where you've uh, you know you have to have regrets. You know you hear at a point in time where marketers are in high demand. Uh, and you're in a, you know, in a very unique time right now. So it's important to take advantage of it. I mean, in my 20 years, um, you know, I've had some big falls, and you've just got to learn to get back up. And you know, for some people, rock bottom is a trampoline. You just uh, so so there is a bit of a roller coaster ride ahead in the next 10 to 20 years for marketers, where you just learn learn to um, bounce back up. Um, for those of you who are interested in studying um, this uh, 
uh, new diploma in digital, uh, digital diploma and professional marketing that I've talked about throughout, throughout the presentation. Um, you can um, contact, um, there's a, some details here that you can contact. Uh, there's lots of study centers out there, depending on what your need is as an individual. Um, you know, there's online centers, there's face to face centers, uh, there's centers through, throughout the world. Uh, so, so find find the right um, study mode for you. Um, if you uh, so one of the one of the hats I wear is I represent a centre called MMT Learning, which is a part of the Manchester Metropolitan University. Um, so, so I've done since I'm presenting, and, and you guys have been patient listening to me uh, for for the last uh, 50, 50 minutes. Um, I am uh, giving you uh, an offer. Uh, this is from uh, this study centre, MNC Learning. Um, so if you are interested in online learning, you're interested in, in doing the diploma or any of the CM qualifications, um, MNC have kindly offered to pay for your um, membership. That's if you are, if you decide to study with MNC Learning, which is one of the centres in, in the mix of centres, and that's for the next start dates that are coming up in March and April. Um, so, so that brings us to the end of the presentation. Um, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm keen to know um, what you picked up from this presentation, what are some of the actions that you're going to take. Um, I'm happy to share these mind maps. I'm always producing lots of these mind maps, so I'm happy to share that with you. Uh, any of you that want personal advice, um, ping me a uh, uh, LinkedIn CV connection, um, and I'll, I'm happy to give you advice. I'm happy to take, you know, my passion is to help you guys succeed. Uh, that's what I do, and that's my purpose. Uh, so I'm happy, even if you're not going to um, uh, go on to any of the qualifications, I'm happy to take my time out and have a look at your CV and advise you in different career directions. Uh, so, so feel free to connect connect to me. Um, so I think we've got a tiny bit of time for questions. Um, I don't know if any questions have come in. Thank you, Imran. So yes, we're now going to begin answering some questions that have been submitted during the presentation. Um, so just as a reminder to the delegates, you can still submit your questions through the question pane um, in your attendance control panel. So um, our first question is for you, Imran. Somebody that might be quite um, strong in sort of the theory side of marketing and digital, what um, digital tools should they, um, should they learn and understand to be an expert um, in that area um, to, be a market, uh, to be a consultant? Right, okay. Um, so, so, so to answer, answer that question, um, the, the, I mean, the, there are hundreds of tools out there. Uh, so, so if you if you're already strong on the theoretical side and your aim is to is to become more practical, uh, so 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 what what some of the things I would have a look at. So if you're going down a consultancy route um, and and you need to it, I, I would really look at uh, see if you can um, try and niche yourself to start off with. Uh, so, so to give you an example of that, uh, so some of the most successful digital marketing consultants I've seen have, have decided that they're going to consult for dentists. So they're going to they're going to take a tool. Um, so one of the tools I work with is Infusionsoft, um, and it's a marketing automation platform. And they've gone and said, okay, I'm going to help dentists succeed in the marketing. So that's that's been extremely powerful because you're taking a tool and you're creating a um, model that can be replicated and duplicated across a number of dentists. So it's, it's quite a clever way of, of, of doing it. Um, in terms of the tools, um, I, I would certainly, um, I mean, strategy is important. Uh, so one of the CIM modules there is digital strategy. So if you haven't studied that module, I'd hide. So by the way, something I didn't mention is when I showed you the modules earlier, you can actually study the modules as standalone. So if you're in this scenario as a digital marketing consultant, I'd highly recommend that you just you can just pick these modules up and do them, do them as individual uh, modules. Um, so so the, the tools, um, sales and marketing automation is growing extremely fast. Uh, social media management tools are growing uh, very fast. Um, so so I, would, I would choose tools that are um, are, are big in the industry that have 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 a lot of have a lot of users. Um, so, so things things like HubSpot and Infusionsoft and so on. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of companies who have implemented these tools, and, and it's a bit like a gym membership. They're paying monthly licenses for these tools, 
and um, they're not doing anything with them. So there's big, big opportunity there uh, for you. But feel free to connect to me and I'll give you some more advice. Thank you, um, Imran. So the next question is, um, what are your thoughts on, or do you know anything about lynda.com for um, training purposes? Right, um, so, 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 so lynda.com has got um, a huge number of lessons. Um, so so I'd, I'd, I would um, uh, recommend, uh, I mean, some of the material gets out of date quite quickly because there, there, are, there are videos that have been pre-recorded videos uh, that have been shot. Um, so, so they're definitely worthwhile at, at a top level. Uh, there's some good, uh, there's some really good videos. Um, I, I certainly use Linda for my team. Uh, so, so in my uh, team in Manchester, if there's somebody who's learning Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Premiere, especially the techie subjects, the very techie subjects, Linda is a brilliant tool uh, to train your staff up or train yourself up in, in using some of the tech subjects. Uh, for subjects in digital marketing, it's a bit more of a challenge because the subjects are moving more faster. Um, so things like search marketing and uh, Facebook advertising. Uh, so there's, there's only there's a limited amount of knowledge and information you can glean from uh, something like Lynda.com. Uh, so you, so ideally, you want to learn from pract practitioners as well. Uh, but certainly, right, as a resource, it's, it is a very good, uh, powerful learning resource. Thanks, Imran. Um, we've had a question about the, the qualifications for the digital diploma. Um, from an MMC perspective, how does someone um, go about starting the qualification? Do you have specific start dates? Um, how long does it take to complete? Right, okay. Um, so, so at, at uh, MMC, there's a regular start date, so there's monthly start dates. Uh, so it's, quite, it's, it's one of the more popular qualifications, so there, there's a regular start date. Um, to in terms of starting, uh, the first first action um, is you can either ping me on LinkedIn or contact James uh, at mmclearning.com. The first thing he'll do is he'll probably ask you for your CV, have have a look at the look at your CV and make sure it's the right level and the right qualification for you. Uh, so there's there's a conversation to be had before enrolling to make sure it's it's, it's, it's right for you. Um, once uh, so you can enroll online. Um, you can pay for your CM. Uh, um, we help you sign up to CIM, so we take some of the paperwork out, out, out of it. In terms of the length of the qualification, so so um, there's a lot of flexibility if you're doing it online. Um, you can do it anywhere from three, four months up to twelve months. Um, so so it really depends on your on your work. So let's say if you, if you're working full time, then I recommend doing it over a nine to twelve month period and spending a couple hours per week studying. Um, if you've got more time on your hands, you can go down a more intensive route and get access to all the content and, and study at a faster pace. And the, the only thing to be mindful of is that three points in the year where you can submit your assessment. Uh, so, so the chart needs to be on marketing, regardless of which study center you study at, mark your assessment. Um, so the three points in the year where you would uh, do, do the assessment. So, um, you know, um, James and myself can advise you on start dates and uh, timings. And also, if you want, on the flip side, I get a lot of people coming to me and saying, I don't have a lot of time to do this, but they, they know they need to invest in the knowledge. So, so you could even do your qualification over a two year period and take your time, go through one module at a time. Uh, so, so depending on your need, I, I recommend obviously you have holidays and family and work commitments. So, so the qualifications, I'm, I'm quite happy to say, are, are really flexible uh, and, and can work around your own schedule. Thanks, Imran. And I guess it's also just good to point out that um, obviously we have a number of other study centres across the country that um, deliver the, the diploma. So if you wanted to look at what was in your local area, um, you can go onto the CIM website and to the qualifications page and you can then search by location, mode of study, so whether you'd prefer to study face-to-face -face or online and see what options are available. Um, another quick question yeah. in terms of the qualifications, Imran, is someone that has the CIM um, professional marketing diploma, um, how does that work in terms of um, then going on to doing the digital diploma? Is there any overlap? Uh, so so the, the, one of the modules, uh, digital strategy, is, is a shared module across the uh, diploma in professional marketing. 
Um, so, if, uh, so congratulations if you've already got that diploma, so you've already done the digital strategy module. So for you to go on then to do the um, digital diploma, you need to do another two modules. So you need to do the uh, mapping digital channels module and the driving digital experience module. Uh, so you, you've got two two outstanding modules to do. So so you're exempt basically from one of the one of the modules. Okay, um, thanks for that, Imran. We've actually run out of time now, so. Um, I'd just like to thank everyone for attending today's webinar. Um, the recording will be available on Exchange um, in a few days' time, so if you wanted to re-listen to it, you can do. Um, I'd like to, um, once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey um, on the presentation, so we would appreciate it if you could complete that survey for us when it comes through and provide your feedback. Um, you will also provide um, be sent a link with um, information on where the recording can be found in a couple of days' time. So on behalf of CIM and your presenter Imran today, I'd like to thank you for joining us um, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you.